So uh, today uh, we have the pleasure of receiving Bernard Alfer, who will talk to us about semi-classical edge states for the Robin Laplacian after Elfer Cachemar. So Bernard, the floor is yours. Okay, so thank you uh, very much for the invitation. Actually, the, uh, the, this paper um, on this talk, uh, which is uh, after a paper with uh, Ayman Kashmar, is, was motivated by a talk uh, at the seminar, uh, ma mainly the talk by uh, Jeff Kalkowski, uh, maybe five, uh, five months ago, I don't remember exactly. And uh, the idea was to, to cross the, the type of results that we get, uh, uh, that we learned from uh, Jeff Galkowski concerning the, the decay of the Steklov eigenfunction with uh, other results that we have uh, before uh, for the uh, Robin Laplacian in the semi-classical limit. And in some sense, uh, uh, the range of eigenvalues that we we are looking at was uh, completely different. So uh, I will not explain new methods uh, today, but just try to push each method to see uh, what each method says. And uh, at the end, uh, it remains uh, conjectures. So I have to, uh, I have to, what the hell? Okay, so uh, so we start from the, the well-known situation uh, that we met in uh, many talks uh, in the in the, the seminar. So uh, we start from uh, some open set omega in R n. So mainly my talk will be uh, related to n equal two, but. Uh, one part is not related to the dimension, and I uh, denote by gamma the, the boundary of omega. So most of the time, I will assume that the boundary is, uh, is connected, but uh, uh, there are also interesting uh, facts uh, when it's not connected. And so we consider the, the Dirichlet Laplacian on uh, omega, and uh, it's uh, consider it's. Uh, uh, we can consider uh, its discrete spectrum denoted by sigma of minus Laplace. Now, if, if W is not in the spectrum of the, the Laplacian, then we can uh, construct the so-called Dirichlet to Neumann operator that is uh, starting from some element psi, say in H one half of gamma, we uh, solve the, the equation minus delta U. So, and so uh, equal W and U equal Psi on Gamma. So this is the non-homogeneous uh, Dirichlet uh, problem. And we look at, then we consider the normal derivative of this solution with respect to uh, the normal derivative of this, which is a priori in H minus one of Gamma. And this is what we call the Dirichlet to Neumann operator. Sorry, I... I... I use the hand. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yes. Uh, so the for the Steklov problem, uh, the presentation is a little uh, different. We will uh, look at uh, the spectral problem to solve minus Laplace and U H equal W U H. So W is the, in some sense, the eigenvalue. But we consider the so-called Robin uh, condition at the boundary. That is a, a relation between uh, the normal derivative of UH at the boundary with uh, equal H minus one half U. And so uh, looking at this kind of problem for uh, uh, the parameter H minus one half large corresponds to a semi-classical problem that you can, uh, that we uh, rewrite in some sense by multiplying by, by a square. And so we consider minus a square Laplacian equal a square w. And uh, uh, this is the so-called semi-classical Robin problem. And so the, the first result uh, I would like to mention about this uh, semi-classical uh, 
a whole bunch of problems is a, was obtained uh, in a paper, uh, in a recent paper with a man Kashmar in the, in the planar situation, but the proof is not uh, related to so much to this, uh, this case, which concern the exponential decay of the eigenfunction when WH is negative. So uh, more precisely, we we consider some uh, some m in uh, in zero one in the open interval zero one and alpha in zero uh, in the interval zero square root of m and then the theorem is that there exists some h naught and c such that you have the this. Uh, decay control of the eigenfunction uh associated to uh, wh so you have a condition on wh which should be less than minus mh and you see that uh, the the decay that appears here represented by this alpha that you can so essentially the best is square root of m so you have, you don't have exactly square root of m but it's essentially think that it means that if wh is less than minus mh then you decay like exponential minus 2 square root of m the distance of x to the boundary over h1 half so this is uh, this kind of estimate is uh, strongly uh, is usually called uh, Agmon estimate because the proof is related to the initial proof of the decay estimate in the semi-classical context for a Schrödinger operator of the type minus a square Laplacian plus v. But here the Agmon distance is replaced by the distance to the boundary. Hmm? And so uh, you see that uh, you have this condition. Hmm? And so uh, the result is good if M is large hmm, for the decay. And when you uh, WH is close to zero, the decay estimate is rather bad. Hmm? Okay. And so, uh, now, uh, in order to see uh, how it can be applied, uh, maybe I should uh, recall that uh, uh, we have uh, we can analyze semi-classically the operator th as h tends to zero, and for example, for the for the ground state lambda one of th, we have an asymptotic which starts like minus h, hmm? and so. Uh, that means that here you can essentially take m equal one. And then in this case, you have uh, the decay for u h like exponential minus uh, to the distance x of x to gamma over h one half. So you see also that the, the semi-classical para the decay ap appears with a power h minus one half. Okay. And so, uh, so you <clears throat> two remarks so this was it established for n equal uh, two but uh, in the end in a more general situation you have a paper by for example by Pakhashkin and popov and uh, note also that here you you can think that you have a, a rather weak uh, decay estimate because it's simply the control in H1, essentially, uh, of the of UH, you control the L2 norm in a weighted space, or the NABLA UH in a weighted space. But uh, then it's uh, it's rather easy to come back to pointwise estimate on UH by uh, using the, coming back to the equation. Mm -hmm. yeah, you and uh, so it's it's rather standard. So the, the main point is to have this. H1 decay estimate in this approach, and then the pointwise estimate is obtained lo losing possibly powers of uh, H, but in any case you lose uh, in, in the exponential decay, you lose already with this alpha, you lose some information. So it does not change so much. Okay, so this is the, the first uh, 
a result that uh, uh, that we have. So uh, of course you now uh, in the case of Steklov, you have not you have W equals zero, for example, and in the case of the disk, you can see uh, explicitly uh, uh, compute explicitly the solution, and you see that uh, the decay uh, far from the boundary is, is obtained by looking at this term r to the power k. So the maximum is at r equal r, and you have some decay. Hmm? Uh, in the case of the annulus, you, you can also uh, uh, do explicit computation, and this gives also an information about, uh, about the, what you can hope. In particular, uh, the, the distance to the boundary is not uh, the exact measure of the decay. Mm -hmm. And so we will see that a little later in uh, writing the, recalling the, the result of Galkowski and Todd. And uh, so for specific examples, I mentioned also uh, another paper um, motivated also by uh, all these talks in the seminar uh, by uh, Dode Elfer Nicolo, which analyzed uh, special cases where you have a, a so-called warped uh, manifold. Hmm. That is a, a structure of uh, a semi-structure of product. But I will not uh, develop on this on this way. Uh, there was a talk by uh, Germain Gendron at the seminar for the young uh, uh, young researchers in uh, spectral theory, where some of the these ex examples uh, where was uh, treated. Okay. Now, uh, so what is to come back to? What is our aim? Uh, we want to relax all the assumptions uh, mentioned on W. We have seen two kind of uh, uh, condition: W equals zero on one side, and uh, W less than minus n h, for example, on and the other side. And uh, the question is motivated like for Jeff uh, Galkowski by the initial paper by Hislop and Lutzer, who say that the, uh, the Steklov eigenfunctions are O of H infinity inside the domain. The, then the two papers by Poltirovich, Scher, Tot, and Galkowski, Tot, which uh, were uh, mentioned by the by the <coughs> in the seminar already, and the PhD of Germain Gendron that I mentioned already. Okay, so I will try to to push uh, each method to see uh, what what uh, what is said by each method. So uh, for Isla plots, uh, the assumption is, uh, is the, the boundary is C infinity. For the paper by uh, the two papers and the second item. We have an assumption of analyticity, which is uh, very important. And for the third one, uh, the manifold is very special. Mm -hmm. OK, so uh, finally, if you uh, analyze the semi-classical framework, uh, what the natural bound for the analysis of the spectral uh, of the spectrum uh, is to uh, consider this, this bound, a square lambda one d of omega. That is not only, uh, we not, not only consider the negative uh, eigenvalues or the zero eigenvalues, but in some cases we can push till a square lambda one d of omega, which is in some sense the, the bottom of the spectrum for the, the problem inside. Hmm? Lambda one d of omega, it's is the ground state of the Dirichlet Laplacian. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, Ola. I don't know what. Uh, oh, oh. So, and I have to come back to the beginning. But <laughs> sorry. Okay. So uh, the first thing was to analyze this uh, paper by Hislop uh, Lutzer, uh, which, uh, which, is, uh, which used the C infinity boundary pseudo differential calculus. And then uh, 
what we realize is that we can say a little more than uh, what uh, the, these authors uh, say uh, by looking uh, more carefully to the boundary pseudo differential calculus who was developed initially by Louis Boutin Monvel in uh, 1969, 1971. And uh, to, uh, to have a more pedagogical presentation here, I can mention the a book by Gerd Grob, uh, which was uh, uh, written uh, much later. And then uh, we'll, in this way, extend the uh, result by Hislop uh, Lutzer. And so first, uh, so here is, the, here is the result that is a, a, an improvement of Hislop Lutzer. I will re recall later the, what was the Hislop Lutzer theorem. And so, uh, we, uh, as mentioned before, I consider the lambda 1 d of omega, principal uh, eigenvalue of the Laplacian. I consider some zeta to be just below lambda 1 d of omega and uh, some p. And then I describe the decay of uh in omega by the following uh, estimate then you have uniformly with respect to W less than zeta. So all the estimates will be uniform with respect to this parameter. And uh, that is, it concerns all the eigenvalues of the Robin uh, problem uh, uh, satisfying W less than zeta. And the estimate is in, in this way, UH of X, is less than Cp zeta h divided by d of x gamma square to the power of t norm of uh on L2 d omega. So uh, what do you have? Uh, you see that as soon as d of x gamma is strictly uh, positive, so inside, then you have O of h infinity in this way. And so this is a, a way to uh, control more precisely uh, the decay in the region which is close to gamma. Okay, so, uh, so this is a C infinity uh, result. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you can uh, ask, if you want to, to do the link uh, with, for example, the Kalkowski tot uh, contact, you, you want to, you would like to have so, something more in the analytic case. Uh, so you can, you can think that you can uh, directly uh, uh, generalize uh, to have a more precise estimate in the analytic case by playing we have a control of the constant with respect to p and optimizing over p. So, uh, and then in this way, you can hope to, to an estimate of this form. That is uh, by optimizing over p, assuming that uh, your cp zeta is a control like p factorial, uh, uh, constant to the power of p, you can hope an estimate of this type. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, first of all, uh, I don't know how to control this constant with respect to p, uh, at least in this uh, rough approach. And uh, secondly, uh, in this way, the best you can hope is to have some c1 and a limitation for the distance. You, should, you have to be sufficiently close to the boundary, and uh, that's it. So, uh, the, so uh, this is the, the best you can hope in this kind of approach. And I repeat, uh, I don't know uh, uh, how to to do th this uh, correctly in this in this way. Uh, just to mention, uh, when w equals zero, uh, the uh, this inequality is obtained uh, in Galkovsky tot with C1 uh, rather arbitrarily close to one plus to one. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so this is the Galkovsky uh, result. I will come back to this result later. 
And then uh, this is coherent with uh, some uh, exponential bound, which was established in a particular case by Polterovich Chertot and conjecture. So the date is, uh, I think it's wrong. It's more, so it's probably two, 2017 uh, for the first, uh, uh, the, uh, the date is, uh, it's the date of the final publication. But, uh, it's, uh, it's earlier. And so you in, in this paper, they just conjecture the existence of C1. So that, and so they are behind this, uh, the, uh, the question of, can we hope C1 equal one? And uh, can we, and the most simple question, can we hope some C1? And uh, you have also this, this restriction, which, uh, and the example showed that we cannot uh, avoid completely uh, this uh, restriction. Okay, so uh, now uh, here is the second statement, which is a, a version of Galkowski taught, but extended, which was only for W equals zero. Uh, we showed that we can extend uh, this estimate in the analytic situation. In the under the same kind of solution, so we assume uh, some zeta uh, less than lambda one d of omega to be far uh, to be uniform, and then we get this uh, this estimate. And so uh, we are as far as close as possible to one uh, here, but there is some epsilon here, so we don't know how far we can uh, go far uh, far from the boundary. We have just in a very small uh, color uh, neighborhood of the boundary that this kind of estimate holds. And uh, so you can think uh, that, uh, sorry, uh, I got, you can think that, uh, so what can you do af after that? And, uh, when the distance is larger than epsilon, then you can use the, pr the maximum principle to, to show that it's, uh, it's exponentially small inside, but you can no more uh, measure precisely uh, the decay if you are far from the boundary. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, a, it's an estimate on the decay, which is uh, very uh, just limited to a small uh, color level of uh, gamma. So, uh, so in comparison with the initial statement uh, by uh, Galkowski taught, uh, this is the condition for Galkowski taught it was established for W equals zero. And it was uh, mentioned that of course, and we will use that uh, if you, if W is just on a, inside the compact in this interval, uh, this uh, works in the same way. Uh, in the application that we have, W can be uh, something like minus one over H. So we need, uh, it could it could tend to minus infinity. So we, we need uh, to to prove the uniform control will not be completely uh, evident. So uh, time is going okay. Uh, so uh, at the moment uh, it's it's unclear uh, if the analytic assumptions in this kind of theorem are important for the estimate. So. Uh, uh, it's, it's quite important if you look at the proof uh, uh, of this kind of estimate in Galkowski thought. But uh, the question of the decay uh, is, uh, is valid in the, in any, uh, also in the C infinity case. And if you look at specific example for special manifold, you have this kind of estimate. So, uh, but uh, if you uh, if you try to to uh, to look in the spirit of uh, uh, Galkowski thought or in the spirit of the semi-classical analytic uh, uh, context, uh, in the, in this context, usually you 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 work modulo exponential minus epsilon over h. Mm, that is the convergence that you you have permits to uh, control the different object or the expansion modulo exponential minus epsilon over h epsilon being not so clearly known 
So if you are in the same infinity context, you, you will only work modulo O of H infinity. And then uh, in the, the, the epsilon that you have, uh, sorry, I'm lost. The, yes, the epsilon that you have is C here uh, in the semi-classical context will, uh, in the C infinity context will depend on H. So we, you will get some information, but only when D of X gamma is very close to uh, the boundary. So this, this does not seem the, the, the right way to understand the, the decay in the C infinity case. And so uh, if you think formally to, to what you, you do in the, in the semi-classical uh, calculus, you, I think you get some uh, epsilon of size H one half log of H or something like that. Okay. And so uh, as you have seen before, the method of Hagman estimate uh, was there are no analyticity assumption. We have a, the, a decay, but the decay becomes bad as W is close to zero from below. And in the statement here, you see that the decay is, you know, uh, is uh, like the distance of H one half. So it does not. It's not related to uh, to the. Uh, it, it's the coefficient one for W close to zero. So this is uh, this point is uh, is rather mysterious also, and uh, I have no no complete explanation uh, for this. Okay, so one formal explanation uh, would be uh, that so uh, you you are you can think of quasi uh, uh, modes which have this form at least for W close to zero. And the question is, how do you prove that this formal quasi mode is close to the eigenfunction? And it's only in the analytic case that you, you arrive to control the, the difference between these quasi modes and uh, the, the eigenfunction. And in any case, it's for W equals zero because this expression is not adapted to to, uh, so for example, for uh, the eigenvalues of the uh, of the Robin problem close to, to the uh, minus one of H level for the, the ground state, for example. Okay, so, uh, so here I present one part, which is uh, the semi-classical part uh, uh, in, in the spirit of what uh, I have done uh, with Eman Kashmar or Kashmar uh, with other colleagues like Nicolas Raymond or, and other names. And this concerns the asymptotic distribution of eigenvalues. So uh, there are two, two kinds of information. If you are interested with the, the vial uh, formula, you, you observe that the negative eigenvalue of TH are close, uh, are the, this number is uh, the same as the number of Steckloff eigenvalue less than H minus one half. And so you can go play from one uh, situation to the other. And there are many, uh, many reference about uh, this, uh, including in the audience, as far as I have seen. Uh, so I will not recall all the all the contribution. And uh, here, uh, what I present is, um, in some sense, a more precise uh, result because it, it's about the, the eigenvalues of the, uh, of the Robin problem in some uh, region, which is uh, so essentially the same region uh, as before. Uh, except that uh, I'm obliged for technical reason to replace lambda two d of um, lambda one d of omega by lambda two n of omega, which is a little more uh, restrictive. We know that the uh, lambda two n of omega is less or equal to lambda one d of omega, hmm? and so this is uh, a result uh, about 
So we, you have the model, which is the model on the on the circle, hmm, which gives pi square k square over L square. And here you have a comparison between lambda n of th plus h minus a square lambda n f of L. So essentially, uh, the spectrum is uh, given by the, the result on the disk corresponding to this Fourier quasimodes, but there, there is a remainder and this remainder is uh, uh, so uh, is only good for uh, in some uh, situations. So the, the the above estimates are only interesting when n is sufficiently large. So it's not adapted to the analysis of the first eigenvalue, but it's uh, adapted to the case of already rather excited uh, eigenvalues. So in particular the eigenvalues which are close to zero. And, for, and the stake law of eigenvalue corresponds to a situation where lambda n of th equals zero, if you compare the, the, the two problems. Okay, so uh, so this, uh, so the above estimates are interesting only for n large. And uh, if n is uh, smaller, uh, then uh, you see that uh, for the eigenvalues, the, so you see this estimate where n uh, does not appear, but we will see uh, later a model where we see uh, uh, the possibility to have another term. But uh, you see that here, the, the curvature, so for the, lower, the lowest eigenvalue, the curvature of uh, omega at the boundary is important. Here you just only see the kappa max, which is the, the main, but uh, also for the decay uh, of the eigenfunction, when you look, you look at the first eigenfunction, the, the curvature will play an important role. Then here, uh, by difference, you get a, a rather weak estimate, O of H3 half, but we know uh, at least for lambda of zero that we have much better expansion, uh, and in particular, the, uh, you can compare the square of lambda of zero with uh, the, Lapla the Lapla Laplace Beltrami operator on gamma. And uh, you have this result by Rosenblum of 1986. So we know a lot for lambda of zero. Uh, when you are a little with W, we know that the principal symbol is the same as the square root of minus delta gamma. Okay. And then here uh, you have some equivalence between the negative Robin eigenvalue and the Steckloff eigenvalue, which are less than h minus one half. So it's a little more precise that the Weyl uh, quantization, uh, the Weyl formula. So time is okay. And then, uh, so what you get uh, in this, uh, for this kind of, of uh, you get the, this kind of uh, Weyl formula here. Uh, if you uh, consider epsilon between zero and lambda two n of omega, and uh, here are the, the different uh, results that uh, you can get. Okay, so I think I will. Uh, I will now uh, come back to uh, some elements about the, the proof about the decay. So we start from the theorem by uh, Islop Lutzer. And uh, Islop Lutzer was just describing uh, what is going on in a compact in omega. So this is the statement of Islop Lutzer. Uh, the assumption is that we are with uh, the infinity boundary. And so, uh, the, the proof, uh, which is also present in the, the proof of, of uh, Galkov taught in the analytic case, is to use uh, the, uh, to try to get information related to the Poisson uh, kernel. Hmm? And so, you for x in omega, you have this formula which uh, relates uh, uh inside. Uh, to the information that you have on UH at the boundary. Mm -hmm. So this is the 
this identity. Uh, you can also, if you, if you if you prefer to, if you know better uh, the green distribution, you can also use uh, uh, consider that the Poisson kernel is uh, is uh, obtained by looking at the normal derivative of g at the at the end. Okay. And uh, now uh, the main ingredient that we add uh, to the proof of Islop Lutzer was to uh, use uh, some information uh, which we find in a paper by Englis. And uh, there are also weaker information in a paper by Kranz. So this kind of information was probably al already known by the by Louis Boutet Monvel or Gerd Group, but, but uh, not explicitly uh, written in the way which is uh, useful for us. And so the the first uh, the the first thing is to uh, use this. Uh, we are looking at an eigenfunction of lambda w with eigenvalue h minus one half. So this is the way to use the Robin uh, condition. And so we can uh, rewrite uh as in this form. Mm -hmm. And so here you, you see that it appears a power h p over two. And then uh, we, we, write, we can write this. And then we play, uh, for, for example, for w equals zero, we play with uh, with this uh, lambda by integration by part. If we get this, and then all the in order to have the information on UH inside, we have simply to have the information on the action of the Neumann to, directly to Neumann operator to, on P. And so this is the the way uh, you get slope uh, Lutz. Uh, uh, result. So now, if you want to uh, control uh, uh, UH close to the boundary, you need to you need to uh, to have uh, a better information on the Poisson uh, channel. Here we have only used that if X is not equal to to Y, that is, if X typically if X is inside. Uh, uh, then uh, the, the kernel P is infinity. And here is the, uh, the form of, uh, of the, info the more precise information about the Poisson kernel, which is given in this uh, paper by Englis. So we are in the C infinity uh, uh, case, and uh, you have a, a precise uh, control of the the, the Poisson uh, kernel uh, when you are uh, in, where you see that you see here the distance to the boundary at least this is a C infinity function which is the distance when you are sufficiently close to the omega you see the singularity of the the kernel and then you have a very explicit expression uh, for the the structure of uh, of the kernel, mm -hmm. and so uh, this uh, this uh, kind of formula is is a consequence of a fine analysis of the boutet Morvel calculus. So, so uh, but uh, in in this way, I take I take the boutet Morvel calculus uh, more or less as a black box, and uh, I can use this uh, formula. Uh, without to come back too much to the Boutel Morvel calculus. Okay, and then you you play in the same way uh, uh, as uh, in the way and that uh, which was done by uh, uh, Hislop Lutzer, and then so you write uh, this in this way. So just to avoid uh, the, the pseudo differential calculus, I compare with the the power, uh, a power, possibly a, a power of the of the Laplace uh, Beltrami uh, operator. So, if you if you can take p even if you want uh, to avoid uh, 
pseudo differential calculus, you don't completely avoid pseudo differential calculus because here you have a pseudo differential operator of order zero because this one is of order p and this one also is of order uh, p hmm? minus p and so the composition of the two is a pseudo differential of operator for order zero uh, on the boundary and it's continuous in l2 hmm? and so this the, in this way you 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 get the norm the l2 norm of uh in l2 of gamma and here you have uh, you can differentiate the uh, the information that you have here for the, the symbol p and so uh, so essentially uh, this is the proof of uh, the theorem uh, for w equals zero now uh, if you want to uh, to generalize and to have it under all the spec, uh, all the con uh, interval that I have described, uh, so W could be very negative. Uh, then you can uh, play and use a rather standard uh, tricks. The first one, which is uh, which is uh, simply that uh, if uh, what you have done with W equals zero, you can do it. Uh, for uh, in in some uh, compact interval, under the condition that you are below lambda one d of omega, just because uh, in order to define lambda of w, you you have to, uh, to you need to have w not in the spectrum of uh, the Dirichlet Laplace. Hmm? So this is the why, the, and so you you <coughs> in this way. You, you have just to, to follow the, the, the calculus, uh, the pseudo differential calculus. So nothing changed at the level of the principal symbol. So the, uh, the case W equals zero is a little simple, but uh, essentially uh, uh, there is another statement in English uh, relative to more general pot so-called potential operators or Poisson-like operators, we, which gives uh, less precise uh, expansion than uh, the one I have written uh, in the previous slide, that which is enough to to treat the problem. And so, at this stage, you have uh, the information for uh, on any uh, compact interval. So the, the choice of minus pi square is just for the next the next step. And then, uh, <coughs> then now you want to treat uh, the the question without. Any uh, any control uh, any uh, any compactness uh, for W, and so uh, and so you the way is to to do some uh, addition of variable trick. So uh, essentially, you will add a variable and work on omega cross S one, so a variable theta, say on a, in a circle. And in this way, you will uh, uh, transform the initial problem in a problem on, uh, on a product uh, manifold with one more variable and uh, for which you can uh, come back to the, the case W equals zero. And so uh, concretely, the, you, you look at a new Laplacian So A uh, is, a, is a parameter which is in a, in a compact interval uh, uh, strictly be, uh, with a strictly uh, uh, positive, so the the this family of operator is uniformly elliptic with respect to a, and then uh, starting fl from your u h of x, you consider v h of x theta equal a exponential i k i k pi theta s u h of x. And you you realize that uh, this uh, this uh, v h is solution of minus delta omega hat a v h equals zero and the normal derivative equal h minus one v h on gamma hat and then you apply the statement that you have uh, uh, in the in the case w equals zero and so you then you have to, some technical uh, 
points to, to find the right A and uh, the right K. But uh, this is a rather standard and it's already used uh, when you want to analyze uh, for the Dirichlet Laplace and the, 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 the resolvent of the Dirichlet Laplace and as uh, the parameter lambda, the spectral parameter tends to infinity. So the, this is a standard trick uh, that uh, uh, was uh, recalled to me uh, by, uh, by Gerd Bob. So we, we use a variant of this. Okay, and so this is, in some sense, the end of the of the theorem HK one, which uh, sorry, which was uh, no, this uh, HK one is before. Let's see. Uh, uh, no, this is. HK. So this is the, the proof of this in this statement. We began the I recall you did. So it's uh, the optimization of a P uh, is unclear and uh, in the proof uh, of the synthetic case I have sketch. So you see more or less what you should do to control with respect to P, but uh, I don't, I have not found in the literature uh, uh, the information that I would have need to, to get the, the right answer. So maybe there are things to do in this spirit. Okay. Now I come back to the, the Galkowski tot generalization. And so the, the the scheme is the same. Uh, so I recall the Kalkowski tot statement. So you you have uh, you look at the Steklov again uh, function. So you have zero here, and then uh, so in comparison with the theor the theorem I state uh, at the beginning, you actually they give a much more precise information about the, the function which appear here. Mm -hmm. So it's not exactly dx gamma, but it's dx gamma multiplied by something. Note that the c omega is not necessarily uh, uh, positive. It can be negative. So uh, the information that it the decay is like the distance to gamma is only correct uh, uh, when you are very close to, to gamma. Mm -hmm. And uh, this estimate is only true uh, in some region, dx gamma uh, strictly less than epsilon, and you don't know epsilon. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you compare with uh, the kind of information that you get with Agman estimate, uh, it's, a, it's a relatively big uh, restriction. Okay, and then uh, there is a, a formula for this C omega uh, that uh, okay that we will not follow in in our argument. Okay, so the the idea is the same as uh, as for the previous statement. First, uh, you you have to extend a little uh, Galkowski tot theorem, which is again based on so uh, some analytic some analytic. Uh, uh, micro local argument, you have to replace minus delta by minus delta minus W. And if W is in a, in a compact interval, uh, the information is still uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have seen that it was useful uh, to modify a little uh, the operator uh, minus Laplace to, to control uh, all the cases. And so you, uh, uh, as mentioned in the paper, you, you are not limited to the Laplacian, but um, here we consider uniformly elliptic uh, operator and all the, the calculus is controlled uh, uniformly. And then, uh, so th this is a, a way to obtain the same kind of estimate uh, 
without the condition W equals zero, but uh, considering W uh, bounded in the above interval. Uh, actually, the, this is mentioned by uh, Galkowski taught in some uh, remark that uh, you can do this kind of thing. But now, if you want to have a W uh, uh, very uh, negative, possibly tending to uh, minus infinity, then you have to implement uh, the addition of variable trick. And uh, this works more or less as in the previous uh, statement. Hmm? Okay, and this gives you uh, the theorem H K2, so uh, how 51, okay. Uh, now, uh, I will come back uh, just a little to uh, the, the proof of the, the, the first theorem. Uh, so it's not, so I thought I have modified, it's more HK3 than HK0. But uh, so what what is the semi-classical technique to obtain the the, the result about uh, the, the approximation of the eigenfunction of the Robin problem. So in, uh, so everything is uh, located near the boundary. So this is uh, essentially the message of the Agmon estimate. And uh, near the boundary, you, you, you can uh, choose uh, the special uh, co coordinate of Fermi coordinates and you get, so I present the, 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 uh, the, the result in dimension two. And then you have uh, this expression of TH in this new coordinate where A is exactly one minus T kappa of S. So you see here the, the curvature uh, which appears. Okay, and then uh, if you want to understand uh, this, the, the spectral theory of this problem, so the, this is rather close to what was done uh, previously in the analysis of the, semi, the semi-classical analysis of the problem in superconductivity, where you have also the, the same phenomenon that uh, the eigenfunction are localized close to the boundary. So you, you have first, uh, to understand the bottom, for example, the bottom of the spectrum, uh, you have first a normal uh, operator to the boundary. And the most simple model which permits to understand is simply uh, the Laplacian minus Dito square after rescaling and, and with the, on R plus, with the condition U prime of no, uh, zero equal minus U of zero. So the, this is the Robin condition at zero, but this simple model. And then, uh, so this operator is associated to the quadratic form, which is uh, written here. Um, and uh, the spectrum of this operator is very simple. It's minus one union zero plus infinity. And then you have uh, the, for the first, the ground state, the first eigenfunction, you have that the eigenfunction is u1 of 2 equals square root of 2 uh, exponential minus 2. So this has uh, the right decay. Mm -hmm. You can think that tau is essentially after, uh, after dilation uh, uh, related to the distance to, so this tau is the distance to zero. And so this explains in some sense the decay uh, which is observed. Uh, in all the results that we have. Okay, now the second point is to understand what is going on on the tangential situation. And so you, you see that uh, you can, uh, in order to analyze the spectrum of the operator, you have a, a tangential uh, operator that you can think leaves on the, on the, on the, on gamma, on the boundary. Hmm? So here I, I put the, the periodic, uh, the periodic uh, situation. So you yeah, better say the, uh, the domain is H2 periodic of gamma. Hmm? And then, uh, so, and so the, the, the statement I have written in theorem uh, HK3, I think, is to compare with the spectrum uh, of, of this operator with two choice of C, essentially. 
plus C and minus C, C large enough. But so uh, what you, you get here that essentially you understand the second term in the expansion of the lambda uh, of the, the eigenvalues of th by looking to this tangential operator. So, so it's a, if you forget uh, this term, it's just a Schrodinger operator on the circle. And so uh, you understand why kappa max, the maximum of the curvature is okay. But so this, uh, this is for the first eigenvalue. Mm -hmm. For the excited eigenvalue, the dominant phenomenon is here. Mm -hmm. And this is what uh, is written in, uh, in the different case. And so uh, here is the comparison theorem, which, uh, which leads, to, leads to the proof of the theorem HK3 is uh, that lambda n of th plus h plus h is the term which co corresponds to the uh, normal uh, effective Hamiltonian. Then you have a comparison with the spectrum of this operator. So essentially lambda n of LH with C equals zero. Okay, so uh, that's all what I can say. So just to, to conclude, uh, uh, we, we have not been able to, to present a, a, a result on the exponential decay in the C infinity case in the same interval as uh, what we have in the analytic situation. And to, actually, we don't know, uh, we don't know if uh, these results obtained in the analytic case are really anal uh, related to the analyticity. So all the examples where you consider special uh, manifold, I, I was mentioning the, the PhD by Gendron on my paper with Baudet and uh, Niccolo. Uh, in all these examples, we have exponential decay without any assumptions of analyticity. But uh, of course, this mal this, because these manifolds are very special, uh, so then that we play with other metrics which are not uh, analytic. Uh, so you can, so this, uh, this, uh, this leaves open many questions. So I'm sorry for that, but uh, I hope uh, you, you, you have seen uh, what we can obtain uh, using the different, uh, the different techniques. So thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Bernard. Now it's uh, time for questions. So if you want to ask questions, you can either ask it in chat or unmute yourself to ask it. Uh, Bernard, can I ask a question? Yes, you, you absolutely can. Uh, in fact, uh, you have the Hagman distance in D of X and H uh, of gamma. Uh, it's T, in fact, when you take the normal system of coordinates. Yes, yes. This is why, so, why you meet this exponential minus tau. Hmm? Yes, but could you improve this T by using the total symbol of the operator because you can write this operator after a reduction d over d square over dt square plus something which is tangential mm -hmm. uh, that could ah. be rise to a, a, fun a phase function which is not only t but which can be a little bit uh, farther from the boundary not i cannot go everywhere of course but perhaps mm -hmm. could you improve that or will it be useful okay. or not so we, we so I, I will answer on two points. Uh, when, you, when you look at the, the ground state, you see that uh, I, I have exponential minus tau or t over h one half in the normal direction. But if you look to the, 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 effective, the tangential effective Hamiltonian, then you will have a decay uh, corresponding to the Agmon distance, the tangential Agmon distance to the maximum of the curvature. Okay, yes. So the, so the right decay is essentially minus T over H one half exponential minus the Agmon distance to uh, uh, the, the maximum of curvature divided by uh, H one over four, I think. So you okay. have two speed, uh, two speed of decay. So the, this is included in your results already. 
But okay. in, in case you, you look at excited states, there is a kind of uniformization. You see, because uh, okay. uh, when I wrote, when I wrote in the case of the disk, uh, the eigen, uh, you get exponential i k uh, theta. So this this oscillates, but uh, in norm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, can you improve? Yes, you uh, actually the you have seen already in the in the statement by Kalkowski taught that it was not exactly the distance. You have exponential minus. So this is a d hat, mm -hmm. yes. which okay which asymptotically d and so if you if you uh, for example if you consider the model of the annulus uh, yes. the, the computation is done in the paper by galkowski tot and you see that uh, so uh, this is not the distance to the um, okay. you have two com two connected component in this case you have an explicit expression uh, you will see that it's it's not exactly the distance so it's, be but, it's better than the distance. But the point is, for the moment, if you use the, as far as I have understood the Galkowski thought, if you use this kind of techniques, you will have just the result in some, in some uh, collar neighborhood of size epsilon with epsilon unknown. But uh, the Agmon estimate does, do not work in the case uh, W equals zero because the Dagmon estimate work because uh, the level of the, the local uh, Laplacian inside is essentially zero. And at the boundary, the, the transversal operator has negative eigenvalues. So, so, so this explains the localization in, uh, at the boundary. But ju just for W equals zero, you're, the two levels are the same. So, so it's, it's, another, uh, it's another phenomenon that you, we, we have not understood in the same 50 case. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you for uh, the question. Do we have another question for uh, Bernard? Yes. Yeah, uh, I, I have one myself. So it, you, you had this, this um, theorem where uh, um, the, the range of validity were for uh, uh, epsilon below the, the second Neumann eigenvalue instead of the um, yes. first Zilich eigenvalue. So, at least heuristically, what kind of phenomenon makes this be the? Uh... I think it's uh, purely technical, so nothing deep. But <laughs> okay, okay. <there. laughs> when we call, when we prove our estimate, we, we have some technical problem. Hmm? Okay, it does not appear in a sort of. Uh, very uh, clear reason why this should be the right. Uh... Uh, so maybe uh, Eman Kashmar has an answer. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I think it's it's not deep. Hmm? Okay, okay. What is deep is, is this lambda one d of omega because uh, lambda w has, has to be defined. Yes, but, yes, yes. Uh, but the other one, I think, it's a question of techniques, uh, the way we are proving this. But, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I have nothing to add, Bernard. <laughs> so as you said, uh, it's not something deep, but just in the comparison, we want to avoid uh, some kind of interplay between Neumann and uh, Neumann eigenfunctions and Dirichlet eigenvalues. Sometimes okay, yeah, yeah. the comparison argument that Bernard presented uh, in the last slides. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Do we um, have any other questions for um, for Bernard? Well, if not, uh, let's uh, thank the speaker again. And um, we will uh, reconvene uh, next week, same time as usual, uh, with a talk by Carl Michael Perfect, uh, who will talk to us about infinitely many embedded eigenvalues for the Neumann Poincaré operator in 3D. So thanks everybody for being here this week and see you all next week. Okay, goodbye. Au revoir. Au revoir, Bernard. Salut.